What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right, 2021 and beyond. Let's get into your wheelhouse here. Who are you fired up about? Let me say something real quick. Let me say something real quick. I got, I'm, I'm about to hit our Patreon people real hard this week. There's a, there's a really, really good chance we don't have college football this year. And I'm, it's a serious business. There's a really, really, because these, these boys aren't getting paid. You, how in the world are you going to put these student athletes on the, together to blood, sweat, and tears on a football field with this virus? And you can't even, you don't have any idea who's got it. We still can't test right, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, there's a lot of time between now and when the kickoff needs to happen. But if they don't have college football this year, I'm about to lean on you, Ray. I, the Devi guys are about to be more important than ever because I'm not a college. I do. I am a college football fan. I work a right. lot of Saturdays. I'm a Gamecock fan, so it's been real easy the last couple of years to lose <laughs> a little interest. It's been real easy to lose a little interest. It's been a long time since we went. We, we, we won eleven games three straight years. But if we don't have college football this year, I can't wait to, for you to tell me who you like already because it's going to be my 2021 draft picks are going to be. Mm, really hard to figure out what to do with. Are you from South Carolina? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we what, all what live part? in Charleston. Oh, I was born in South Carolina, man. All right. Yep. We all live like five minutes from each other. We usually was, do this at, at our house with all three together, but obviously the circumstances right now. I was born in Orangeburg. Oh, oh shit, yeah. that's real close. That's right down the yeah, street. I was born in, yeah, yeah, I got my grandparents live uh, out there. So, yeah, cool. I mean, I got it fucking tattooed on my arm right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, didn't, I was just born there. Like literally yeah. my mom just was passing through with my grandma's and I pop, I came out. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, it's this whole 2021 thing is scary. Uh, you know, and, and if there is a college season, I mean, we're just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but there's some talented, talented ass players in 2021, man. I mean, we, we, we were joking before we got live talking about the next year's class is always yeah. better than the year before, right? I'll wait till but the next I'm, year. Wait till the next year, though. Right. But I've, I, I said this pre-2020, like once all the declarations were going on, I was like, man, if, in capital I, capital F, everybody who's 2021 eligible, if they come out, which we know some of them have no choice, like Devonta Smith, Tylen Wallace, they're all seniors, so they have to come out. Jamar Chase, is, Jamar Chase is going to come out because LSU receivers always come out after their junior year. Um, but it could be so much better than what we have in 2020. And I'm talking about from the high end to the to the back end. I mean, Jamar Chase, of course, Rondell Moore. I think Rashad Bateman is going to give them a money uh, run for their money as the top receiver in that class. You've got Tamari on Terry out of Florida state, Devonta Smith, Tylen Wallace, Sage Surratt, Warren Jackson. Uh, I, I mean, I can just, uh, and those are just receivers quarterbacks. We're looking at two, the number one overall pick is going to be Trevor Lawrence. The number two overall pick is probably going to be Justin Fields. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's just, and then when you go running back, that's the part where it's a little, I'd say it's a little down from 2020. Uh, my top three guys, uh, Chuba Hubbard, Travis Etienne, and Najee Harris uh, at the running back positions, followed by Max Borgie out of Washington State. And just because he's a white running back, that does not mean he is Danny Woodhead. That does not mean <laughs> he's just a third Christian down. Christian McCaffrey. Christian, oh, God. Uh, white running back, Christian McCaffrey, Danny Woodhead. Those are the comps. <laughs> Black running back that's thin with dreads and wears 25 is Jamal, Jamal Charles. Charles yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's just, these physical comps, the laziest shit I've ever seen. Max Borgie is not Christian McCaffrey. He's Max Borgie, and he's damn good. Um, but the running backs are a step down for me in 2021. But the, the tight ends, like we don't even have to discuss tight ends in 2020. Punt and wait till 2021. You got Pat Fryermuth out of four, uh, Penn State, uh, Kyle Pitts out of Florida, Brevin Jordan, Charlie Kohler out of Iowa State. I mean, it's just, it's going to, and I'm just talking about the offensive side of the ball. Um, yeah. It's, I'm really excited for 2021. But not having a college season, ugh, I mean, 
gosh, I guess you just late if, if that, and I think that's a very real possibility, man. Like these are student athletes. These aren't pros. So that's what I'm saying, they don't get paychecks and they, they're the million dollar, the millionaire NFL players, they can take that risk. They, it's like, you, Hey, you want to go out there and play ball? We'll put you up in Montana, some stadium nobody's ever heard of and, and right. play some NFL maybe, you know, to keep you out of risk and we can actually all still make our money. But in college, I don't. It's, yeah, I got it less than fifty fifty right now. I've really studied up on this. I've really been big on studying this virus crap, and <laughs> I, I got I got it less than fifty fifty having a college season. I feel like they're gonna push it somehow. Like I, I still feel like it's gonna happen, whether that's with it in the best interest of the the players or not. But it's a very real possibility. And if you are one of those top players, just say Trevor Lawrence. What if he's just like. I know I'm going to be the top pick. I don't want to get sick. Like, you know, True. I'm just going to chill. Like I'm, I'm not risking it. I'm, I'm just not. That. There will be players who do that. Hands down. There will be players who are like the hell with this. Yeah, like, I've got a million dollars waiting know, on me. I don't even know how this really works, but I heard somebody say this. It might've been one of our Patreon dynasty leagues. Um, the, can't you still, for the supplemental draft, can't like ETN still say, "Oh, well, okay, there might not be college football this year." Can I can I go ahead and jump in the draft? I've I've seen a little bit of talk about how that would work. I, I don't know how I don't know how that would work. I yeah, think I like either. the ETNs, the Najee Harris's. I feel like I don't the think, money would be so much smaller that they would be less. That they yeah. would just wait it wait a year. I would imagine. Yeah. Like I don't know how the supplemental draft works monetarily, but like those guys are like high high end picks that probably are leaving a lot of money on the table by. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, Casey. Yeah. Because, I mean, good even point. after you get out you of the second back. round, you barely get any money. When when the Browns took Josh Gordon in the second, they had to give up a second the next year. So, I would assume that you the money that. might be similar. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know either. Hey, real quick, you mentioned uh, punting button on tight ends. Um Thoughts on Chase Claypool at all? Maybe, maybe like, just the, the upside of potentially moving to tight end? For this, I've been, one. I've, been, I've, been, one. I've been finding myself drafting him, you know, in startups. We've been doing a lot of mocks and stuff like that on Patreon, and he ends up hanging around, and I just always scoop him up and, and see if you can either maybe get double designation or he moves over. Um, Bingo. Bingo. I mean, he, he'd be tied in one. If, if, if he gets drafted and the team comes out and says Claypool's going to be a move tight end for us, he's tied in one, and in tight end premium leagues, you're looking at a borderline first-round pick in rookie drafts because at 6'4", 240, it might take a minute, is ridiculous. maybe, before you're getting tons of return because I feel like that is probably the hardest position to transition. Like, you see it usually take the longest to actually come in. But if you got it right in the right situation with the right coach who was smart enough schematically, you could definitely see gains right away. So I always thought, I think that's interesting because this tight end class, everyone just keeps saying is boo-boo, so... Yeah, I'd pass on it. And I don't really care if my tight end lines up in line or not. That's why I was so high on Noah Fant last year. Like, yeah. I know everybody was over TJ Hawkinson, and he may still be the better overall tight end, maybe. maybe. But in fantasy, I don't care about that. I knew Noah Fant was an oversized wide receiver who was going to mm-hmm. play out of the slot. And towards the end of the season, it started to start for him. I agree 100%.